Hi there, welcome along to the second video in the Vector series for P1 Maths. In this video we're going to be talking about unit, displacement and position vectors. So the definitions, and you need to know these, a uh, unit vector has a length of 1. Now in the last video I introduced special unit vectors that were parallel to the axes, i, j and k, but in general a unit vector could be any vector as long as it's got a length of 1. A displacement vector is the vector from one point to another point. And really importantly, a position vector is the vector that takes us from the origin to a point. That is what a position vector is. Often in the exam they ask for the position vector. First thing people are thinking is what the heck's that? Alright, so let's look at this example. A is the point 4 minus 3 down here. And you can see the vector that takes us from the origin to that point is the vector 4 minus 3. So there's a difference between the point and the vector. B is the point 3, 2, so the position vector of the point B, we often label it little b, uh, and it will be written in bold in the exam, is 3, 2. Okay? The vector that takes us from A to B is just the displacement vector. Okay? A displacement vector from A to B. So to get from A to B we'd have to go minus 1, and up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1, 5. If you just have a look at that last example, we get a very important rule here. To get from the point A to the point B, we can go from the point A to the point O, then from O to B. So we can move between two points using their position vectors all the time. And it's the same rule all the time. From A to B is just A to O. Now notice O to A is the vector A, so to go from A to O it would just be negative A. And then from here to here is just positive B. So A to B is just negative A plus B, or you could write that as B minus A. Okay? Negative A plus B, or B minus A. So this is a very important rule that always works for any points to get from A to B is just B minus A, where B and A are the position vectors of those two points. So let's look at this example in three dimensions. In two dimensions it's easy to look at. I mean you can look at it and find the position vectors and the displacement vectors. In three dimensions, not so easy. You've got to use the rule. So A is that point, B is that point. Find the vector from B to A. Notice the order here. So B to A is just A minus B, where A and B are the position vectors. So it's just the second letter minus the first letter. Notice the position vector of the point A, where A is 2 minus 1, 3 is 2 minus 1, 3, written out like this. So just make sure you're getting used to the idea of writing vectors and points differently. Okay, pretty simple. 2 minus 0, minus 1 minus 4, and 3 minus 2. There we go. There's the vector that takes us from B to A. So we've got two position vectors there for the two, for the two different points. Now I want to know the vector, how we get from B to A. So let's do that now. So we've got the point B here, point A, create a vector. Okay. So that green vector there is the one that we want. To get from B to A, I could go from B to O, the origin, and then from O to A. That would be the same as the green vector. So in other words, minus B plus A to get us that vector that we're looking for. Okay, if I move these around let's see what's going on. Okay, one important skill that you will have learnt last year in the IGCSE course is expressing a vector, any given vector in terms of position vectors or any given vectors. So we've got a few examples here. Here a two-dimensional example. I've defined two position vectors M and N. So the point M might be there and the point N might be there, but we've just given these vectors here and I want to be able to get all these four vectors in terms of M and N. Now the grid is deliberately kind of skewed here because I don't want you thinking it's always going to be up and down. Uh, and in this case it's not. We're defining these vectors here in terms of M and N. So how do we go from O to A? To get from O to A We've got to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lots of M. Okay? 
So there's one lot of n there, so that's just going to be 5n. To get from O to D, okay, so from here to here, we're going to go across n. Notice n is like four squares to the right here. Another four squares, one, two, three, four, will take me there. And then m is two units up, so one, two, three, four. So we've got four lots of m plus two lots of n. And it doesn't matter which order you do it in. Four lots of m first would take you to there. And two lots of n would take you to there. So 4m plus 2m. A to d, here we've got a displacement vector. So to get from a to d, we're going to go across first. So one, two lots of n across. And then we're going to go from here to here. Now notice that's minus m. m is always going up. So to get from this point to this point is minus m. So we've got 2n minus m, or if you like, minus m plus 2n. C to b. Right, to go from c to b, we're going to go back to, and notice n is 4 long. So if I just want to go back to, that's minus a half n minus m. Or you could go minus m minus a half n. Notice both those roots get you from C to B. So there's the answers for those four. So here's a three-dimensional example of that same kind of idea. This time we've defined the unit vectors i, j and k going in these directions here. So you always see this uh, this little example here so you know where i, j and k are going. And usually also the orientation of these is i and j in the plane, the bottom plane, and then k or in terms of z if you like, the z values are going up. Okay, so we want to write in terms of i, j and k how to get from o to b. Okay, alright, so to get from o to b I'm going to go from o to a and then from a to m. So O to A is 12 lots of I, and from A to B now is going to be 8 lots of J. Notice this length here is 8. So we've got 12I plus 8J. M to F. Okay, M is the midpoint of AB, so we're going from M to F. There's lots of different ways that you could go here. Um, what I'll do is I'll go from here to here, so from M across to the midpoint of this side, so that would be minus 12 lots of I. Then I'd go 4 lots of J, which would take me to the point C, and then 6 lots of K. So minus 12I plus 4J plus 6K would, go, would get me from M to F. And it doesn't matter about the order there. G to M. Right, G to M. Okay, doing things in the same order. I'll go the I direction first. So we'd go 12 lots of I, which would get me to here. Then 4 lots of J, which would take me to the midpoint here. And then minus 6 lots of K. So 12I plus 4J minus 6K. Yep. And the last one, N to M. All right, so the midpoint of this side to the midpoint of this side. Okay, so we're going to go 6 lots of I, then minus 4 lots of J, and then minus 6 lots of K. So 6I minus 4J minus 6K. That's how I would go from N to M. These are very useful when we start looking at our last video talking about angles. Um, once we've got these vectors written out we can easily work out the angles between them and you can think of an angle like B, N, M, something like that. Very difficult to work out with trigonometry with vectors very very easy. Here's the last example. Uh, the trickiest one definitely, absolutely, and you'll have questions like this in the exam. Uh, it's a really good idea to draw some kind of diagram here that will help you out. I'll show you now what it actually looks like.
So what I've drawn over here on the right is just a little, just a little basic diagram. A, B, and C aren't really where, don't need to be where they actually are, like I've just shown you. But just gives you an idea of what's going on. Okay, so if you draw up your little X, Y, Z axes, put in a couple of points A and B, and it gives you a feel for where C is going to be, and also for the technique of how we're going to do it. Also in part B, where D is going to be. So I encourage you to draw this kind of diagram here. It really helps. Okay, so since C divides the line A to B in the ratio 3 to 4, C is going to be 3 quarters of the way along the vector from A to B. So let's work out what this vector from A to B is. This is a displacement vector. Using that rule, A to B is B minus A, where B and A are the position vectors. So B minus A gives us this vector here, 4 minus 8 minus 4. That's the vector that takes us from A to B. So C has got to be 3 quarters of the way along that line. All right. So A to C, A to C is 3 quarters of A to B. So A to C, 3 quarters of A to B, 3 quarters times each of these numbers here gives me 3 minus 6 minus 3. Okay. Now that's not the answer. That just gives us A to C. The thing that we want is the coordinates of C. So in other words, we want the vector from O to C. We want the position vector of the point C. So how do we get from O to C? Well, there's a number of ways you could do it. I think the easiest way is to go from O to A, then from A to C. So the last part of this question, to get from O to C, we go O to A plus A to C gives us 5 minus 1 minus 1. That's the position vector of the point C. So the coordinates of C, 5 minus 1 minus 1. Remember to write out your answer as a point if that's what it's asking you for. Okay, part B, now we're looking for where's the point D so that A to D is twice A to B. All right, similar kind of thing here. We've worked out the vector from A to B. So if I double that vector, that's going to give me the vector from A to D. Okay, so let's do that. Double A to B is double 4 minus 8 minus 4, so 8 minus 16 minus 8. That's the vector from A to D. Now, similarly as we did in the first part, to get from O to D, which is what we want, we go from O to A, then from A to D. So O to A is this vector, A to D is this vector, add them together. Here's the vector from O to D, so here's the coordinates of the point D. Now, we could have done that a different way. If you wanted to, you could say O to D is O to B plus B to D. That would be another way of doing it. So you could use the position vector of the point B, which is 6 minus 3 minus 2, and then add on the vector from B to D. Now you can see from my little diagram that B to D is the same as A to B. In fact, B is just the midpoint of AD. So that would be another way of doing that problem. So for the second part of the problem, we've got the same two points, and we're asking where's the point D? So that A to D, here's A up here, a to D is twice the length of A to B. Okay, let's just zoom out a little bit here. Rotate this around a little bit. Okay, so we've got, there's A to B. A is the red point, B is the blue point. So I want to know where's D so that A to D is twice A to B. So D is going to be down here somewhere, right? Right about where I'm pointing. So that the red point to D is double the length of A to B. It's obviously lying on the same line here as well. Okay, So D's somewhere down there. Once again, you're not going to be able to draw this. Really difficult to draw. So you're going to have to rely on the techniques to find the answer.